Oh, that's right. Oh, how indirect that received reports. Did you say shortly? Did you say squaw? A rock fall near Weeping Rock stopped traffic inside National Park for more than an hour yesterday. The rock fall, a little bit after 3 30, threw up a dust cloud that forced shuttle buses to stop until about 5. The Weeping Rock shuttle stop, the nearby parking area on the hiking trail, are closed to the public while park scientists and maintenance staff assessed uh, what is happening with rock in that area. Partly cloudy skies this morning, giving way to mostly cloudy skies in the afternoon. And we will be seeing uh, some possible rainfall for us this evening. Highs today get near 60. Oh, sorry, there, but sorry, sorry. Highs today near 60, lows than your 40 in the city area. Uh, near 70 today, lows tonight for near 50. And right now, Oh, we haven't done this for all. 27 out there, Rachel. It's 29 in Changwich, 48 St. George, and uh, 45 here in the, the Cedar City area. Utah State Aggies picked up a win over Southern Utah in the home mm -hmm. hardwoods. Utah defeated SUU 9384 in Logan. Great also bar erupted for 31 points, 10 boards, four assists, three blocks. Darius Brown, the second, had 22 points and eight assists in the win. Utah State improves to two and one. The Aggies will take on Marshall in the Cayman Islands Classic. Yeah. That's sports. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if I've told you this before, but here in the state of Utah, you actually can be in flux. Yes, we looked at the weather for flux a, about five to six weeks ago, actually. And it's a random two house town in between Twilly and I mean Twilla. Twilly. Twilly <laughs> and uh, Salt Lake. That was good. So, you know, I love that moisture is coming. I'm very grateful for the moisture. You know, all of Southern Utah is being in a high desert climate. The other thing that you know, is really timely that we're talking about it with Wired Wednesday. In studio today, we have Jesse Paul from the Lark Group with KW Realty. How are you doing? Good morning, everybody. I'm doing great. So a few, a couple of shows ago, we were talking about chaos, mm -hmm. like the 12 or the six sources of chaos yep. and the 12 ways to kind of mitigate chaos in our life. Yep. So this really is timely because not only are we going through, you know, seasonal change, you know, almost daily, I feel like we're in the high 70s or the low 40s. Right. <laughs> but how we respond to change internally, uh, in our household, in our businesses, in the business climate, real estate, insurance. I mean, there's some super volatile things going on. Well, and, and in the overall economy and the overall world, there's a lot of volatile things going on. So how do we how do we take that on like individually almost like and well and how are we responding to that as humans just generally we're either responding by reacting or simply responding so if we're reacting right no by the way i steal all this stuff <laughs> this is not because i am so smart we partner with a company called place and some of the smartest people that i consider and it, in the country and we have talks like this every week so i take what i learned there and i bring it here which is that's the best way to learn something teach it right absolutely so this actually comes from a from a call we had a few, a few weeks ago with christopher suarez from place and it talks about um the rugged you know your guide to rugged flexibility how do we manage change and what we, what we talked about is the, 
the, the more things that we do in our life are connected to our values versus our ego will will guide how well we respond or react completely agree and i think that that goes like if we're emotionally connected to it right that's that's our values sometimes not necessarily because our ego could be very emotional and then going through the the if disruptor it's, if, it's, if it's connected to a true who who do i want to be reasoning right what, what is my value who do I actually want to be? And quite frankly, not all of us show up the way we want to be all the time. No, I would. Right? I, would call I, I don't. I, sometimes I look back and go, "Well, oh, geez, who was that guy that showed up? How did I ever say that?" And I have to backtrack. Right? That sometimes is because I'm reacting, or I'm coming out of ego. Typically, if I get my feelings hurt, it's because I'm in ego. Ooh. So instead of in value going, man, is that really what they mean? Or is that really true? I have a really good friend in my life that he always asks me, is that really true? What's the reality? What is the, is that 100% true? And if, if it's not, if, if I could tweak it in my own mind or in my own emotion, would it change the way I think or the way I feel? Then it's not 100% true. Well, and everybody's reality is different, right? We're all sitting here in the studio having a radio show, but people listening to this, are they truly listening or not? Or are they really taking, you know, taking to heart the different things and whatnot that we talk about, or do they brush it off? Like right. everything everything is from perception. So through rugged flexibility, you know, that Christopher Suarez was talking about, there's, there's a whole, you know, variety of where, where we can take this, I guess, because right. what happens at least in my personal life. Right. And I mean, I don't talk about my personal life a lot, but it's so intertwined with my business life is where I cling to change, you know, that needs to happen. Like I need to be more, Progressive is not the right word. That's not meaning politically right. termed, but like, where do I need to take my household to the next level? Where do I need to take my business to the next level? But then when it doesn't work out the way that I think it should, going back to, am I actually resisting the changes that I'm wanting? Or am I clinging on to an idea that's actually false, like uh, unrealistic expectations? Right. So, so one thing that we talked about in there is, oftentimes some of the things that we try to change in our life are unconscious like right eating food was one example that chris used is an unconscious thing we don't think about it we just do it and most of the time we always eat the same thing yeah right so as we're changing things that are unconscious if we try to change too many of those things at one time we set ourselves up for failure, failure for all of them. Because if we, if we fail on one of them, if let's say we're trying to change two, three, four things at one time that are big mm -hmm. in our behaviors, are, are we setting ourselves up to have it be more difficult than just working on one or two at a time? So when, when we go through that, you know, I was having a conversation yesterday with somebody and, you know, when it was, you know, about the power that we have individually to change our lives, right? Uh -huh. But often when a good thing comes into our life, right? right. And we're, we're open palmed asking for these good things to come into our life. And these good things happen. And then we tighten our fist around it. It's kind of like the monkey jar, right? Okay. But we're not, a, we're, we're resisting. Yeah, instead of allowing life to flow. Right. Is that, is that your... Right. Instead of allowing life to flow and progressively change, I'm resisting change because I'm holding on to this one good thing that happened, but I'm, I'm really asking for the next best thing, but I can't let go of what I already have. So then you're resisting. Okay, so hold on. Let me, let's back up. So are you saying you're holding on to the new thing or you're holding on to the old thing? I'm, let go of? I'm holding on to the old thing that okay. was a gift at that time, but I can't let it go because it was such a good thing. And I'm not ready or I'm, I'm resisting the change 
Okay, so let, let, let's leave go. this back into the questions we should ask for rugged flexibility. Okay. Right. So the number one is where is where is it rigid, clinging on to resisting change? Number two, what part of my life unrealistic expectation, right? See that these are the things you were going through. Right. These are the questions that we should be coming up as we feel that change, right? Well, and unrealistic expectations go internally and who I'm surrounding myself with. Right. One good thing we talked about is in business, if what I'm doing in business is not getting what I expected it to, are my expectations unrealistic for the current market, right? Because we don't live in a bubble. Markets are alive, right? People Big are flex. different. So if, if what I'm doing, and this counts for every business, any business, right? what I've always done can't always work because people are fluid, people change, markets change. So if I'm not getting the results, are my expectations or my, you know, my, is my plan unrealistic? And do I need to adjust? So then that would go into the elements of identity that I cling to too tightly. Right. Because if I'm tied to this unrealistic expectation of what's going on in the market, but I'm so, I'm, I'm holding too tightly onto this idea but I'm really meant for a different thing. Yeah. One, one good way to, to really talk about this is there's a, it, at least in my house, when I was growing up, there was always this saying is that's just who I am. Right. Yeah. Like, that's just who I am. If you don't like it. Well, but am I looking at myself and saying, am I actually who I want to be? Do I want to change is this action? Do I want these kind of results in my life? I'll tell you what, every time I get in an argument with my wife, I truly want it to be her that has to do. But is it really possible that that's true? Or is it more possible that if I actually change, that relationship would change? If we become the person we actually want to become, or aspire to be, or through the mentorships and through the people we see that are actually real. I'm not talking like about the crazy social media things that are super uh, skin deep, uh, but like the people that aspire and inspire multitudes of people, what would it be like to be them, to influence other people to, to want to be better themselves, but truly feel that and be able to to accept those changes and to be less less rigid or less clinging onto a past life and reaching forward to the future life. Huh. Because then that forces me to start showing up a little bit different each day, you know? And then it goes into a whole compound effect. The little things you do are like atomic habits. You know, if you changed one thing today, what would it change? Or what would it change for you in the next five years? Right. Having having a, two extra tablespoons of mayonnaise on your sandwich versus a tablespoon of mustard over a five-year period is actually like 30 pounds. Oh, that's a lot. That's a ton. Well, and it, it's the little thing. So choosing one thing or the other. If I show up differently today for my relationship, what would the compounded effect be in the next year? So, so that, that was a really big one for me. It's like, how am I actually showing up in my life? Well, you know, what are the results in my life and am I happy? Well, and it also goes, you know, for me, it goes into, um, am I, oh my goodness, I just lost my train of thought. Hmm. The, the, the change, right? The resistance of change. But in, in that, if, if we really wanted to change the world, am I showing up every day? in a positive or negative mindset? Mm -hmm. Am I a complainer? Am I controlling my controllables or am I trying to control the uncontrollables? And really the worst thing that could happen to any of us is so far beyond our control. Then why do we, why do we resist it so much? Right? The worst day is so far beyond our control. Yeah. I, and I, I always go back to, I, I, 
this is a bad word, but I'm going to use it anyway. I'm, I'm kind of a freak where I really, truly believe that it, it's the bad things in life that actually grow my character and make me better. So I don't go through life worried about what bad stuff's going to happen. I just don't, because I truly believe whatever it is, it will, if I'm willing to walk through it, make me better. Well, and... And I just went to a thing down in Las Vegas, um, but it was really like the fire that forges us. You know, if if this is the worst thing that could happen today, what is it forging me for for tomorrow? Who am I supposed to be? Who am I supposed to become? And if I hold on to these unrealistic, you know, expectations of myself or resist change, it takes longer to go through the fire. It takes longer to get through those bad experiences or through those changes okay. because I'm not willing right. to accept and move through. I've often watched myself go through things over and over and over. Jesus, priest, what is this? And it's the resistance to walk through them. And to resistance walk, to walk all the way through them, right? So right. then you go, okay, what's actually causing that? Oh, it's how I'm showing up. Okay. How I'm showing up, not anybody else. How I am affecting how I show up in the world. No, because because ironically, most of those things that, and this is, I think this is true for everybody, most of the things that each of us go through, four or five things all the time. And those four or five things are with different people all the time. So if that's true, who's actually the only one there every time? You. Me. Me. So it has us. to be me creating some of that. Or most of that stuff. And so, and if that's true, could some of this stuff actually help me to finally walk through it so I don't have to go through so, so I can find the next one? Right, you know, right. But then each challenge or each thing changes us a little bit more. So then on on number two, right? Or you know, whatever of these rugged flexibilities, you know, the parts of my life, unrealistic expectations. Am okay, so I looking? Are we, are we going to self awareness? Or are we going? Are we still back here? Just be unrealistic. Okay, unrealistic. Yeah. This is going to be half a two week series. This is yeah, deep. yeah. Well, no, it's re it is, this a two -week is deep. because what it does is it also ties us back into the twelve ways to get out of chaos. Is right. who we're surrounding ourselves with. So that was an interesting thing. So one thing they talked about is, and I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Homeostasis is, is basically the state of um, or the state each average. of us average live in, right? And allostasis is the process in which when we hit stressors, the body goes through to get back to homeostasis. Okay. Right? So, and sometimes that is, that process is me looking at myself going, okay, what's really going on? Can I change this? If I change this, would it help to get back to that that stabilization, right? Right. Well, and and sometimes, you know, going back to who we're surrounding ourselves with and the five people that we are are who we surround ourselves with. So are we in the middle? Are we at the bottom or are we at the high end of those five people? And then do we hold unrealistic expectations on them, right? whether they be our business partners mm -hmm. or our best friends or our spouses, like kids. kids, you know, the whole thing, if we're surrounding ourselves with these five people all the time, are we really being fair to them in holding unrealistic expectations for them? Mm -hmm. And, and how do we change our perception of what's actually happening and what's affecting us? So how do I show up differently for the five people in my life? And what would that change within me? And how do I become better through rugged flexibility of almost trial and error, but, but being open to the changes or the things that come and flow through my life? Because really, I, I think I got this from you, really, Dad, is the ability to always figure it out and the ability to always walk through more fire than resist the fire. Right. Well, and it goes back, and it starts with the question, can I change it? Because if I can change it without anybody else doing anything, right. then I actually have some control. Over it. If I have to have everybody else change for me to feel comfortable, 
because then I've got a problem. Either I got people, the, the wrong people in my life, or I have unrealistic expectations. But that even that goes back to I need to change. It's incredible that a lot of the chaos that we cause ourselves is self-inflicted. Is self-inflicted. <laughs> and the ability for us to see past that, we have to be willing to get rid of our ego yeah. and embrace the suck. Well, and actually decide what what kind of life do I actually want to have. And where in in almost and start, phases. And start to measure that. Right. And things don't happen overnight and nothing does. My life 20 years ago was significantly different than it is today. You know, even five years ago was different and, and three years ago was different and, and different, you know, homeostasis things have, have forged my fight, like have put me through this where I'm thinking, excuse me, more outside the box than I ever have, you know, but it's to benefit more people that I'm surrounding myself with. Right. You know, which, which to me has a high emotional cost because if I fail, but do I truly fail or do I just figure out how not to do it? Well, I, I would, I would dare say if you're, if you are failing at that, are you actually living in ego rather than value? I don't because know. Because you don't have control over other people. No. So if you're trying to serve other people and do the best you can and you're, failing at whatever they're doing or not doing mm -hmm. is that more about ego than value because you again you can't control what anybody else does no but i would dare say that because of if it's true giving with zero expectation of anything coming back you will be growing completely agree and 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 it cannot ever fail because there's no expectation of, of, of something coming back because of that service. Giving freely, showing up the best way possible. You know, I love where Wired Wednesday is going, especially with these mindset, mindset weeks with Jesse Paul with the Larkin Group at KW Realty, because we really, we enjoy having these really hard conversations because the world needs to hear hard conversations right now. It needs to know that there are options rather than living in chaos and listening to the five o'clock news relentlessly and, and living in that fear because the world is so full of love. Samantha, hello out there. We, hey. we, want, we want to get together. Yes, coffee soon, sis. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you guys so much for joining us for Wired Wednesday. I hope that this has benefited your day and that it will take you take you through the rest of the week. And then next week we'll have Ben Batty with Laura Albrecht and the lighting of the Christmas That's tree. That's going to be fun. Ben Batty is one of my favorite people. Oh, ever. and he promised us. I hope that he can hear this because I'm going to hold him to it. He promised us that he would dress up with what he dressed up with last night at Dancing with the Star, the Community Stars um, for the CJC fundraiser. So That's fun. we look forward to that outfit, Mr. Ben. And man, just for the things going on in life in general right now, this, conversation has really hit home because it yeah it really there's with what you've got going on doesn't it? it does because there's so many different things you know that are I'm going to say flexing in my life um and I really have to hit back and evaluate that of am I living in ego or am I living in value so Anyways, thank you so much for joining us for Wired Wednesday. Thanks, this yeah. is McKinnon Hansen, your local Farm Bureau financial agent, 435-592-2021, offering all insurance products with the team that I have now. And I am also a licensed real estate agent with KW Realty at the Larkin Group. That's right. Find us at, on Google with the Larkin Group or give us a call, 435-592-2021. Over now.